Well, the thing looks exactly like what happened with the first World Trade Center attack, where they find the mentally unstable people, the FBI commands them with the informant, uh, they cook the bomb, train the drivers, give them the detonators, and the informant comes in and says, let's go bust them now. You know, I didn't want to build a real bomb, but you commanded me to. And, and they said, no, no, we're going to let the bombing go forward. So Ahmad Salam recorded them, rightly thinking they were going to shut him up and claim that he was the mastermind, and it turned out he was right. But then he released those recordings on the New York Times steps, and they had to back off. So it's on record they did that there, too. It's just speechless. Well, I think was when your audience, and I would, listeners, I would encourage them to go to the, the website again. It's kmtreward.com. It's one word, kmtreward.com. It has a photograph. It has a conclusive evidence of the murder. It has a photograph of the ligature mark on my brother's throat. After he'd been tortured, they strangled him with plastic handcuffs, and you can see the marks left by the handcuffs. Gotta kill the witness, or who they thought the witness was. Stay there, Jesse. scheduling conflicts today with Mr. Trinidad is set to be on with us and then I'm on Press TV in the fourth hour today so we hope folks record that and get it out on YouTube. I have the uh, internal emails released by the Department of Justice with the then Deputy Attorney General using mafia style terms and other FBI agents in mafia style terms dealing with the uh, Trinidad case, the whole cover up of this, this is just disgusting. This is, and, and, and the torture photos and the rest of it. This has never been published before. Paul Watson is going to be doing a story on this. We'll also do a report and a link to uh, the fact that they've got a quarter million dollar reward with the money they finally got in their judgment uh, against the FBI in relation to the case of their torture murder of uh, Jesse Turner's brother. And we're going to have this all in the story, but 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 basically, for Paul Watson listening, you can get the story we did in 2005, story we did in 2006. I think you did the stories, Paul. We have to multitask here, Jesse, uh, of such a small staff. So I'm just, as the editor here, telling the story I want right now. Basically, the chronological order, like Jesse did briefly last hour, the memos, the the FBI trying to set him up. Uh, the Nichols information, what Nichols said, uh, the fact that the FBI said they didn't have the memos and then admitted they did but blacked it out, but then they had the other copies that had been leaked by the good FBI agent so they could put the two together and get a clearer picture of what was happening. Uh, the fact that Mr. Trinidad a few weeks ago ran a full-page ad, a large ad in the Washington Times. We're going to recap all of that. Uh, and, and put this report out for everybody. But but the fact is, this is breaking news. It deals with the new Attorney General nominee who honchoed the cover-up of the Jesse uh, of Jesse Trinidad's brother's murder. So, so be specific. Recap it all in a chronological order, and then why the new up, up-and-coming, it looks like Attorney General, why this is so important and so central, and the terms used in these uh, emails. Well, basically, as I said, it was a, a the Oklahoma City bombing was apparently a failed sting operation. Uh, whether the FBI intended the bombing or not, I don't know, but they certainly had advanced knowledge of it and, and didn't stop it. And they certainly were involved because their informants helped carry out the bombing. Uh, my brother, unfortunately, resembled one of the co-conspirators with McVeigh and was killed for that reason, tortured extensively and then strangled with plastic handcuffs. Uh, we sued, and we couldn't prove the murder because we didn't have a motive. And, and they, Mr. Jones, they destroyed so much evidence. I mean, the, the log books disappeared. The crime scene photographs disappeared. My brother's blood stained clothes. He's undressed, and his clothing is thrown away before his body's turned over to the coroner. The cell was cleaned, um, even though it was against the law to do that. I could, I could go on for an hour at the evidence that was destroyed. And... As I said, I received before his execution a, a message from Tim McVeigh. He said my brother was undoubtedly killed because he resembled Richard Lee Guthrie, who I believe was A. John Doe 2. And I say A. John Doe 2 because 
the descriptions vary because there were so many people involved that every time they saw Tim McVeigh was someone, they described that person, and it was a different description. But my brother Matt Guthrie's description, who McVeigh knew, and at least I believe was a John Doe, too, um, I received, and they were from an FBI source, two teletypes from FBI Director Louis Free. He was the director under the Clinton administration, talking about the sting operation, talking about the fact that uh, McVeigh had called Elohim City, where this operation was being run, two days before the bombing, asking for more help. And this is reported back to the FBI, and then they don't stop it. Long story short, I'm in a big court fight to obtain those documents I do. Uh, they're incredible documents. And then I, the court gives me an order allowing me to go depose Terry Nichols, who wants to tell the whole story. Um, and as I said, I, there are three reasons I believe in Mick Nichols' story about the government's involvement it, to be true. is There's nothing for him in that in doing so he exposes himself and his family to risk because one of the things they typically do is that they can't get at a person they will get at the person through directly they'll get at them through their family so he puts yeah they call up and threaten your parents they threaten your wife they threaten your children the second reason i believe that what he says is true is why fight me so hard i mean why this fight to keep nichols from just saying telling someone what happened and the third and probably the most important is the United States District Judge looked at those documents, looked at the declaration they had from Terry Nichols, and said, you go take that deposition. Folks, total evil is taking over our government in the high places. There's still good FBI, still good military, still good, some good judges and lawyers and, and citizens. We're the majority. But if we don't <clears throat> have courage, I mean, folks, I had the D.C. madam on and, and off air. I said, they're going to kill you because she had the names, you know, the vice president and the rest of it. And I said, you better go public and say you're not going to kill yourself. She said, oh, Alex, you know, I, you know, everybody knows I'd never kill myself. She went on air and said, I'll never kill myself. And then she, she, she'd she written memos. She told her uh, condo manager, I think they're following, may try to kill me. If they kill me, tell them, you know, you know that I was killed. And then they murder her and then produce some quack to come on TV and say, oh, she privately told me she would kill herself. Uh, you know, I mean... If I get killed or Jesse gets killed or any of us get killed for this stuff, you know, Jesse's just dealing with one thing. I, I'm doing this on hundreds of fronts, sticking my snout in this. Uh, and, and I'm not saying people should love us or, or even, you know, fall down before us. But realize, you know, we're taking a lot on our shoulders here. And uh, it's a lot to deal with. And, and, and we just got to stop all this. You know, let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about these latest emails that people are going to be seeing later today. Now, these are released. These aren't secret. You know, days before they gagged it, I got to see the uh, memos, and uh, we respected the gag and didn't put those out. Uh, but uh, this is this is new. This is public. This has the government certification numbers and stamps. This is public if the press wanted to put it out. We've got it. We're putting it out today. But I want to be clear uh, that we're, quote, allowed to put this out. Right, Jesse? Yes, sir. These are court records. These were produced in the lawsuit. Okay, let's be specific about the uh, who's talking in these, who they're discussing. Uh, I, how can't, they're yeah. I can't tell. They're, they're Department of Justice memos. Uh, they're, they're actually emails, and they're talking about Deputy Attorney General Eric Holder and what he has to do to keep the lid on this, this story. And they, you know, they say, we don't want any press on this. We've got to get the hatch. We've got to get the door. And, and, and they're using first names, and then they're Is alluding okay to... okay with Eric's schedule? Eric will have to make the call. The deputy attorney general has got to do this. Uh, this is being handled from the Hill. And it says you're meeting with the deputy to discuss Trinidu dues. They talk about Trinidons. And Trinidons. And then over here it says this is like coordinating the invasion of Normandy. We are on for Monday. The memo is done. I think uh, this is okay with Eric's schedule. Be very important to pull this thing together. The talking points, rollout plans. We just learned that our FOA shop often declines to disclose when we assert that disclosure could impair a state criminal investigation, even after out investigation is closed. Using some code here, what does that mean? That means that they remember the grand jury that, that didn't indict my brother's murders. 
concluded secretly in August of 1997. They plan to announce that in October, and this is leading up to that announcement, what they have to do to, to defuse what they expected to be, a, a no pun intended, a bombshell. And what they're saying is, if we go in our tele, if we do in our press release and saying there will be a state investigation, then we don't have to give anything out under FOIA. We can say there's still an ongoing investigation and keep everything a secret. Now we've got first names here: Ricky, Al, Kevin, Cheryl. Uh, there's some first names here that I can put with the head of the anti-terror unit and others that we were now involved in the cover-up, but it doesn't have their last names. No. Al, I think, is Mr. Moskowitz, who was the head of the Civil Rights Division for the FBI or the Department of Justice. I mean, this was a coordinated, this was a coordinated cover-up run at the highest levels of justice and out of the White House. Well, that's why they say that this is like coordinating Normandy, just massive. And I think it's in, it's not insignificant that they refer to it as the Trinidad mission. And you have to ask yourself, why would the death of one little person, uh, which they claim was a suicide by hanging, generate this kind of activity at the highest levels of the Clinton-Reno Justice Department? And the answer is, in my belief, they knew this murder, if investigated, would lead to the Oklahoma City bombing and lead to the fact that the Department of Justice through the FBI and ATF informants was involved, and this occurred just before the re-election of Bill Clinton in 1996. Well, everybody is a government operative or agent except for Nichols. And uh, he is the lone patsy in all of this. McVeigh was the uh, insider patsy, like Lee Harvey Oswald they set up, their operative. And uh, next, uh, we're going to have you on for two hours next Tuesday uh, from noon to two, your time, from one to three central time. And, and, and I'm going to try to give you the floor completely except for a few questions, and I want you to put on, in that first hour, the two hours, put on the case for people, why you were able to win in court with this, and why it, it's so important today, because, again, we have uh, th th this individual who, who honchoed the cover-up about to be Attorney General, and God, and God help us. So uh, next Tuesday, sir, uh, and plug the website again uh, for the quarter-million-dollar reward for the FBI agents, uh, and, and, and close out with that. I think it's important. You're, it has the evidence, the conclusive evidence of my brother's murder, and that your, your listeners need to see that before we talk again. It's www.kmtreward.com. My brother's initials, Kenneth Michael Trinidad, kmtreward.com. Well, God bless you, and we're all praying for you, and I hope folks pray for myself as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Trinidad. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Thank you for having me on, Mr. Jones. You better take care. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with me.